<laughs> hey, Hello. everything's fine. Can you hear me? All good? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Hey, so uh, good afternoon, I guess, for you now, yeah, right? Yeah, good, good In sunny morning. California. Thanks yeah. for agreeing for, to do all this. Yeah, of sure. Could you please? Could you please introduce yourself to our viewers and listeners? Sure. Sure. Um, I'm Ari. I'm the singer of Psychic Hit. And I'm Andrea, or you can call me Dre. I play lead guitar in Psychic Hit. Awesome. Yeah. It's so awesome that you agreed to do this. I really like your music. And Thank you so much. I, I know that uh, you have an album coming out this Friday, right? Yeah. Yes, this Friday. Yes. It'll be out worldwide <laughs> uh, and that's what i wanted to talk about i wanted to talk about the album your decisions regarding the the album itself because i have some you made some interesting choices with it uh, and i wanted to talk about what preceded this album you know um yeah. because it's a base for your decisions so uh, as a starting point let's maybe talk about before you formed the band, the Psychic Hit, maybe what are the significant points that preceded it? You know, maybe like you moved to California, to Oakland. So a little bit of backstory of your journey, you as a hero going forward. Yes. So hero's journey, right? <laughs> um, we were, we started conceptualizing Psychic Hit all the way back and I think it was like 2017. Um, we both, both of us, we lived together, we're partners, and we both had been in bands um, be before. Ari was most notably in uh, Nick Turner's Hawkwind, um, and also a band called Hedersleben, and I was in a band called Clean Crescent, and a right, a roughly around the same time, both of those bands ended, um, and, you know, at that point, Ari had been doing kind of more prog and space rock, and my old band was more of like international psych feel but we both started you know really talking about starting a band um that was more was heavier like really influenced by like you know like late 70s like hard rock and early heavy metal and just like getting into you know just like really revisiting old scorpions records and old Judas priest records and rainbow and being like you know what like we don't want to be like a rip-off retro band but we're so like inspired by this era of music like let's start like a, a band that had that draws a lot of inspiration from this and so we started writing together and then um from there we um started working with a bassist and uh, a friend of ours melanie and then we started working with justin our drummer and i always tell the story very chronologically maybe you can fill in the more fun parts about it I'm like, yeah but that's <laughs> correct we should go chronologically it's really important <laughs> Yes, it's all very correct. And um, well, when Dre and I got together, we both would talk to each other about what we really wanted out of our band. Yeah. And she wanted more professionalism. I was in a situation where I was basically hired for touring and I was like steeped in professionalism. And I wanted something where I got to have more control over the music. And Dre, when she and I started the band, was like my angel of music because I didn't really know how to sing and front a band. Like I knew how to do backup singing and I wrote folk music and did like experimental violin music, but she really helped draw the energy, the front person energy out of me and inspire me to really just open up and sing and trust my instincts. So and I think I did some encouragement for her too to like be a guitar hero and <laughs> <laughs> um well you know kind of like <laughs> we developed over the years a really special collaborative creative relationship and yeah. so when we decided that we wanted to take on band members we were very intentional about it we made lists we lit candles we like made it it was, there was a lot of magic behind it. Yeah, yeah. I, I read about in an interview, there was some magic, real yeah. magic. <laughs> it works, it works. I mean, we're all, as humans, like, we're, we all have a ton of energy, and we're always moving energy around. We just don't realize it. 
So right. when you're intentional about it, you can really, you can really get, you make can, some shit happen. You can life. really, yeah, call so, things to your life. You know? Yeah, so... Uh, so Actually, we, I had... Well, oh, sorry to interrupt you. Cont continue. I will have right. an idea for later. I have it written down, but for later. <laughs> yes, oh, please okay. continue. Yeah. Um, well, I'll just wrap it up by saying, um, yeah, I think that um, we just wanted to, we felt very strongly that we had to work together and we had to have a band together. And that was something we both really needed to do in our lives. Because if we didn't combine forces and try to do this, that we would somehow be missing a big opportunity in life. Yeah. So it really is our life's dream to continue on making this music that we would want to buy and that we would want to hear and be the musicians that we want to see, be the performers that we want to experience and travel the world playing our music and see the world, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I saw and, really yeah. quickly want to say uh, hello to all of the friends who are watching. Hi, and hello to all my followers. And actually, people can ask questions if they hit the question mark here, I think, down there. And we can answer the questions a bit later. Uh, we just don't want to ruin the flow. Uh, no, actually, I wanted, to ask, I wanted to ask you about the uh, California a little bit. You know, for us, mm -hmm. you are so far away, exotic, sunny California. <laughs> uh, we feel the same way about you over in Europe. Exotic, Germany, uh, Austria. Austria. <laughs> yeah. And for us, it's all a dream, you know, California dreaming and stuff. So it means a lot of creative people and musicians come to that place. It's like this area. So I would imagine that there will be a lot of bands, a lot of creative people, and therefore a little bit of competition among musicians you know it's it's pretty I, I don't know I've never been there so I'm asking how is it like there um well it depends on where you are because we live in I mean Oakland and, and San Francisco which is right across the bay is technically uh, um you know northern California I think the vibe here I mean I don't want to generalize <laughs> but th there is a difference I think between northern and southern California in terms of um not necessarily work ethic for musician, but like your what your particular drive is. Because I feel like a lot of people when they go down to LA, they're looking for a particular type of lifestyle. And if you live in more Northern California, it's, it's slightly different. But there is a really strong work ethic out here as far as musicians and music goes, even though California is horrendously expensive, like where we live is one of the most expensive places in the world. It's a struggle to live here, find housing, and on top of that, you know, there musicians, we all, most of us work full-time jobs. So we're doing this because we have so much passion for it. Um, so I think that, you know, in the Bay Area, there, the music scene, although it's changing, I feel like is, is, is so vibrant and there's always new bands popping up. And it's, it's, it's pretty exciting to be here, it is. I mean, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, there was more going on, but um, I, I just, I think it's, it is, there is a lot of mystique here and I think a lot of it is well-deserved for sure. Just to put in my two cents, you can think about it this way. Southern California, LA, Hollywood, they're really competitive there. Mm -hmm. You have to pay to play in a yeah. lot of venues. In <laughs> the Bay Area, San Francisco, Oakland, it's very community oriented. Yeah. The venues, the bookers, the promoters, the artists who make flyers and posters and artwork and all these things were all very familial. And yeah. yeah, when I first got here, I lived in San Francisco and then I came to Oakland, but the inspiration is palpable. I'm from the country in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I had no inspiration there and I dropped out of college and just came here. And because mm -hmm. I wanted to be a musician and I knew that this was where the scene was good. And I was right. And it's still good, even though it's expensive and the techies are like, you know, still kind of taking over. There's still a really, really great scene here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's pretty strong, I have to say. Yes, uh, I wanted to ask about the pay, uh, pay to play or pay for play thing, because uh, it still exists and it still exists even here. I can't name, I don't want to name venues right. or names <laughs> or promoters, of course. Yeah, but uh, that's what I wanted. To, that was my next question. You know, is it also happening at your place there? But I guess yes. Uh, it 
happen not not really here in the bay you don't really you know as ari mentioned it's it's very like once you're in the scene here once you're in a, in a band and you're doing stuff and you get to know everybody like it's it is very you get to like i'm friend we're friends with a lot of most of the bigger bookers in the bay area because people are approachable and friendly and there really isn't that yeah pay to play that's definitely more not to knock southern california because there's a lot of amazing bands and things going on down there all the time but it's definitely more of that culture down there of like yeah you want to get in front of people gotta you know <laughs> yeah i mean even when i was in playing with nick turner in in his touring band in america the and whenever we went to LA, the people who worked at the venues would treat us like shit. <laughs> and everybody else, they would treat us like Real royalty. <laughs> and, but in LA, they will not. They don't play. Kiss, they don't kiss ass. They don't kiss ass unless you are hot shit. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, don't, LA, we love you. We want to come and play in LA. Let's not. I don't want to. <laughs> but, but you're rude. It, <laughs> oh. Well, let's. It depends. Not everywhere. I don't want to. I don't want to generalize an entire huge, huge city under this banner. But it just depends. It depends on who you know. It's just like anywhere, you know. I know from the film industry, from the screenwriting industry, the people who, especially if you watch some interviews, like there is a web um, uh, YouTube channel, Film Courage, and it shows the writers that live in LA and went through the life of LA they all broken down and kind of <laughs> depressed and they, yes i'm happy here i'm really i'm really happy but you know you you to get here you need to like sleep in a car for a couple of nights you know get beaten down a little bit you know mentally yeah. or physically but it's worth it it's definitely the place yeah. where you want to yeah. be if you want to do a to be a in the film industry yeah <laughs> yeah a little bit yeah, yeah. for sure <laughs> well there <laughs> I guess there's a little bit, well, not a little bit, you kind of need to do some grind or whatever, but I wish it was easier, but, but pretty, at LA it's really hard. There's so many people, so many creative people coming there. Of course, there's more competition. Yeah. All right. I mean, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. No, no, no. Please tell um, more. I don't I want to talk all say, the time. Yeah, I was just going to say we... Sometimes I lament the fact that like in other parts of the world, musicians can just live and exist and have a good uh, quality of life just playing music as a career. But here it's so much harder to establish yourself as a professional musician when you're starting from nothing. But I talked to someone about it once who was European and he, was, he said to me, well, the fact that you have to work harder ultimately makes you stronger. So I think that even though we have to work our asses off and work full-time jobs and all these things to get where we want to go and get the opportunities that we want of our dreams, um, ultimately we're stronger for it anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the grass is always greener, right? There's yeah. like pl pluses and minuses to, to everything. And, you know, um, yeah. Well, w what you say is, is that exactly what people think about California here or United States, you know, there people can live just by doing what they love, being a musician, like exactly the thing. But now we can hear that pretty much everywhere. I mean, depends. It depends what kind of musician you are, in what music genre you are, classical, yeah. pop, hard rock, even, even sub-genres, metal, for mm -hmm. example. It also um, makes it actually... Uh, is there some predominant music genre that's dominate, not dominating, but more in your area? Oakland? Uh, Oakland is known for its metal. Like, and like, metal. I feel like right now, like, especially more extreme metal. Would, would you agree? Yeah. When I first moved here, like, nine years ago, it was a lot of stoner, a lot of doom, a lot of sludge. Really good stuff. And now I feel that there's still a lot of black metal and extreme metal and stuff, but there's also more really good hard rock um, mm -hmm. and like 70s and 80s inspired rock too. I think there's a, there's a good amount. I don't know. There's some. Yeah. There's but people fair. are doing really interesting things with electronic music here too. That's true. Really, really cool electronic music, really cool experimental music. So, I mean, there's a whole range um, of of genres to appreciate and i feel that the people here 
they're not just into one genre so much. When I first moved here, it was like metal, metal, metal. But now I see people getting into and appreciating and going all different kinds of shows. Yeah, there's there's lots of strong subcultures and scene here. So yeah, you have like extreme metal and then more like tra you know, traditional metal. You have a lot of yeah, a lot of great electronic music. Um and there's a good there's a really strong punk scene here. Yeah, really huge punk scene. Um yeah, so there's kind of something for everybody here and all the scenes are pretty pretty strong, I think. Yeah. I mean I could be wrong, but from what I see from my from my lens and perspective. All right, cool. Let's back back. Let's get back to you, to your band. Sure. Um, so you decided to, to form a band, right? And you released a demo, right? In 2018, right? That's right. We released a four-song demo then. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting about it is that you released it as a tape, a cassette, an audio cassette, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot... Originally cassette and, you know, obviously digitally online too. Yeah, but it's a little bit of an odd choice, c considering that it was in 2018, right? So it was not as popular, right, as now. Now it's hotter, probably. How, was it, how was it, actually? Uh, there's a lot of tapes flying around, at least, I think, in the Bay Area. Tapes have been a thing. But um, I don't know, what do you think? I mean, I, tapes, yeah, tapes are definitely becoming a hotter and hotter commodity. Um, I've noticed, I mean, I, I keep up a lot with like music news and industry stuff. So I know in the past couple of years, it's definitely um, cool and trendy again to, to do tapes. But, you know, we, we're, we're like pretty much officially sold out of those tapes. So I yeah. think we did pretty okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was also like cheaper to put it out on cassette than like vinyl um and you know just to have something physical to sell at shows was super fun and um it just sounds good i think just things sound really good yeah on, it sounds cool um yeah yeah and i think that people are just really into all different kinds of mediums of throwback shit so like throwback fashion throwback like tapes and vinyl and all that kind of stuff like people are i don't know i feel like that's there's a growing culture of people just wanting all this old stuff so, and and what do people usually use to listen to those tapes? Where do they listen? A car, you mm -hmm, can cars. A set player, um, or you can find a boombox. We, mm -hmm. we have a stereo. We have a yeah. We have a stereo that has a tape player. Mm -hmm. on it. Why I'm asking is because I've been telling a uh, local community because I'm I'm always researching music industry and I'm checking out like uh, United States, so what's hot there, you know, and it usually comes here, but a couple of years later, you know. So mm -hmm. cassette here, they, tapes exist, but they're not so hot as at your place. Yeah. Here, CDs still exist, you know, CDs are a big thing. Uh, I haven't seen that you released any CDs before. You only did tapes and yeah. uh, digital. We have CDs of our demo, and it was funny because it, it, it really depends on the community. And this is a this is a trend that I noticed. I don't know if this is like, you know, I don't have the data to back it up or anything, but I've noticed that in places that are not major cities, like sm I guess small cities, I guess if you call them B cities or whatever, um, that people ask for CDs more. Like we'll we'll, we'll occasionally we'll go to a, a this small city called Nevada City, which is a great community up there and we were got so many people asked us for cds that the next time we went up there we pressed a bunch of cds to sell so it's interesting i've noticed other places too where i don't know what it is and maybe i'm wrong but like places that are, are smaller smaller cities and towns they want cds and like bigger cities like oakland la wherever they want you know they want vinyl uh and mm -hmm. yeah uh I started noticing a new trend, which comes from the Scandinavian countries, from Finland, is that CDs are becoming hotter because mm. uh, it becomes a collectible item, especially if it's like an old band, you know? So right. it's, it's uh, find some CDs from Japan or Germany of special pressing. So there is a future for CDs, just same like with tapes. So it just depends, I guess, on your local community what's what's in demand that's yeah good, that's good for us to know whenever we get to europe we'll press a bunch of cds <laughs> yeah. 
I, and I think in Austria, uh, I, th I, I think I checked last year the statistics. Uh, Austria is big on CDs still, you know, among other European countries. Well, not sure, but CDs are still a thing, let's say like this. So yes, definitely bring CDs. Okay, sweet. Good to know. Duly noted. Uh, and so you released this demo version, and I read in an interview that uh, after that, you decided to keep it uh, slowish, you know, not rush into finding a label or something like this because you wanted to keep it slow. Can you expand on that? Why? Why? Yeah, um, it's we just we, it's really important for us to like whoever we're going to be working with that we're on the level um, with them, and it's we're 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 the type of band that we like to make very intentional decisions uh, about, you know, what we do, who we work with. Um, and so it just, we don't, we don't like rushing into things. Um, I mean, that, that, that kind of contradicts my personal personality, but like as a band, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, as a band, uh, yeah, we, we like to process things and, and deliberate on things and, and things like that. Cause ultimately we want to make sure that our music is getting represented uh, in a really um, true and, and, and honest and, uh, you know, exciting way. I mean, ultimately, we, Dre, knows so much about music marketing and mm -hmm. branding and all these things that we felt that we were self-sufficient enough and we didn't need a label to do all those things for us because we can do it well ourselves. So why should we kind of go out and try to negotiate when we put so much energy into our art. We have a very clear vision of what we want the artwork to look like, what we want our look to look like, what we want our branding to be like. Like We didn't need anybody else to do that for us. We figured we could do it better. So we wanted to wait and see if there was someone out there, some label out there that was really, really hardworking, shared our vision, really believed in us, was kind, considerate, nice to work with, a friend, you know, and um, Seeing it takes time to, to find that. So, and the label that we're currently working with, Seeing Red, um, run by this really great great guy named Tommy, um, has been really wonderful so far. Um, fantastic to work with. And that, I guess, that would be my piece of advice for anybody in bands out there watching this or who will watch this in the future is that really, honestly, the best thing that you want, the most important thing you want to do is really build your own voice, build your own story figure out what you want to do, what you want to say, not just musically and creatively, but just aesthetically and everything before you pursue trying to build relationships with a record label or with, um, you know, whoever, whoever in the industry, because the stronger your voice is and the more that you know yourself, um, the better uh, time and, you know, you're going to have more negotiating power and you're just, you're just, you're going to feel more confident about your, your own, your presentation and all of that. And when you do, um then you could start building like you know stronger and healthier relationships rather than just like uh you know doing it out of like desperation or whatever yeah i mean ultimately even if you're working with a label there's a lot of work that you still have to do anyway yeah to get people to notice you and to get your people listening to your music and paying attention like you have to convince people consistently on a consistent basis why they should take the time to listen to your shit. So um, yeah. just because you get signed doesn't mean you stop working. You yeah. work even harder. Right? Labels like, don't labels don't do a ton, ton, ton of stuff that they used to do. Um, they just they just don't. So they don't have the money or they're not gonna the personnel. Labels are not gonna want to invest any money in your band unless they see that you work your asses off. Exactly. That's what I've been talking for a long time. That's why I'm asking you because you've been through this process by analyzing how you like how you were doing with the demo that you were touring. I knew that you will answer like that, so I don't need to repeat myself. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Because so true. Yeah. So true. Yeah. You got You got to prove yourself a little bit before anybody's like wants to sink their their energy time and money into you yeah um because they want to make sure they get a return on investment and that makes total sense you know like 30 years ago record labels were throwing money at bands but it's the, the industry is so different now you, you gotta you gotta like stand on your own two feet first before somebody's really gonna like want to push you up even further yeah you know? it doesn't matter how great your music is you could be the best band in the world 
But if you don't have an Instagram or you never post on it and you don't do photo shoots and get your image out there and like interact with the world, then the world is not going to interact with you. And labels are not going to want to work with you. They'll work with a different band that's more motivated, that might not have as good of music, but they still have good energy. Yeah, you gotta kind of you have to wear multiple hats these days, and it's like a lot of people don't want to hear that, but like honestly, that's that's what you got to do. Again, it comes down to like uh, solid music and a cr incredible work ethic. And if you have that, you could do whatever you want to do with music. Honestly, one like, last you can. and one last thing I'll say about this is that we do approach our band as a business, and we are artists we're very creative people and we want to be creative for our careers for our main careers for the rest of our lives but we also have to be business minded and there's so so much we can do with every human walking around with a little computer in their hand and all <laughs> kinds of apps to help you and support you we can do this as creatives whether you do art or filmmaking or music you have to be business minded if you want to reach people and you want your art to be experienced. So, I mean, you can't yeah. just be an artist. You also have to learn this stuff, but it's really easy to learn. You go to YouTube university <laughs> and watch some videos and take the advice and just do it. Yeah, and I don't, exactly. want to, like, ruin, I don't want to ruin the magic for anybody to talk about, be like, oh, Ben, talking about business, that's so whatever. No, like, no, oh, no, 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 you should, you should ruin the magic. Be. You should <laughs> ruin the magic because there's too much <laughs> bad magic. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, exactly. this is good magic, what you're talking about. Yeah. This is the real. I mean, we have to, in this world, I mean, at least in America, they're not throwing money at artists yeah. the way they used to. The, the arts <laughs> and culture are not invested in. So you have to do it for yourself. We have to fight to keep the culture uh, delicious and new and fresh and vibrant because city, uh, you know, civilizations have, have crumbled and died without art. We have to take the responsibility to keep creating and keep pushing it out there so that people have access to it and they can relate to it and they can understand their world. Yeah. Well, exactly. Said. Yes. <laughs> and, and people always forget that it's music industry. It's show business. Half of it yeah. is business. Yep. So yep. you, you, yeah, maybe you don't like it, but it's not that hard. As you said, you can figure it out. Yeah, you can, yeah, and, and, you can and if there are like four people in a band, at least, or three, four, each person can have a uh, responsibility for, for right. each platform, booking. By the way, you did your booking yourself, right? I guess. Yeah, well, we, we, we were planning on doing more out of town shows and then the pandemic hit. So like we, our, next, our next step is to start playing more regionally um once you know things are really back into full swing um and this is like you know our our personal intuition and the advice of our record label too is that start sort of building it out from from the bay area so um right now as of now uh, we do do our own booking it's really easy locally though because usually we get asked we don't have to usually <laughs> we get invited to play things which is really cool um and yeah, I think, you know, obviously in the, in the near future, as we, as we book out more regionally, um, we'll probably do it ourselves unless somebody wants to hook it up. Um, we can work out on something. Um, but that's just kind of how it goes. That's just usually how it is. You, you do it yourself first and then um, a booking agent might take interest and you start working, in, working on that relationship. So, um, so yeah, as of now, it's pretty DIY in our world yeah it's 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 a standard process for each band you start your on your own then you get to a certain point that you can't physically already doing this because you're so busy and then when the booking agent com comes in when the manager comes in then the label comes in and then you need a lawyer always get a lawyer if you right if you need a contract oh, yes. to <laughs> sign a contract that's yeah. what we know from movies at least yeah <laughs> Yes. Yeah. We, we, we highly recommend having a lawyer. We, we work with one and it is so important um, to have, you know, somebody look over your contracts for you because you want to protect your, your music and your livelihood and 
you want to make sure you're getting the best deal and it's it's business baby that's what <laughs> it's just business you know at the end of the day you gotta understand what's going on so that you can protect like you're putting so much energy and money and time into making music and making albums you've got to make sure that you're protecting yourself and protecting your your uh your art so yeah. you gotta i mean most people don't know how to look at a contract and really understand it. So going over with the lawyer, just pay the money, like play a few shows, three shows, put the money toward the, and the, that's probably going to be enough for a lawyer to go over the, go over a contract with right. you a few times. Mm -hmm. So it's worth it. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, and how did you, how did seeing Red Records, uh, who, ca who approached who, or how did you find it? Or a little bit about that, because for many, uh, artists, they think about labels and labels, you know, they don't think about uh, do it yourself. They want to get signed, but it's just a next step. Can you explain, expand on that a little bit? Um, so yeah, so I, how we developed, so how we developed our relationship with Seeing Red, that label? Yeah, yeah. Um, who, who approached who, or at least? Yeah, it was, it, I don't know exactly how it happened, but or who followed whom on, on social media, but it, it really started with just like us seeing each other, like game recognized game, as they say, like seeing each other on, on you know, social media. And, um, you know, I was looking at um, Tommy's roster and, you know, and sort of the things that he was doing and what the, where he was able to take bands in terms of, you know, good PR and, you know, and, and things like that. And I was like, huh, this is, this is cool. So after like sort of like the initial stage of us liking each other's posts and commenting and that sort of thing, um, start, it, it like turned into having like a DM conversation. And mm -hmm. uh, at one point I was just like, hey, well, we have this record, you know, it's already, it's done, it's mixed and mastered. We're looking for somebody mm -hmm. to put it out. And he was mm -hmm. just like, hell yeah, let me listen to it. And um, he got really excited about it and immediately started having, we started having conversations about like, um, you know, he's like, this is, these are the things that I could provide for you. And we're like, that's awesome. These are the things that we've done. And it was just this like really awesome dialogue. And then we eventually had like a Zoom call with him and we worked out a contract. And, and, and since then it's just been like, you know, uh, you know, it was just like really awesome premieres. Like he's been able to get us on Brooklyn Vegan and Cult Nation and we're gonna have a premiere on on Decibel this this week, I think. Um, fingers mm -hmm. crossed. And so he's been able to do some really cool things like that with us, and um, and also just all around being a really transparent and hardworking person. Like his label is still pretty, you know, I guess compared to other a lot of other indie labels, like pretty small, relatively new. But he's just his he's just got a really strong drive, and I can definitely see his label just continuing to grow exponentially in the future and that was like exciting for us that we're, where we're at in the stage of our game it was like, we we're excited to like, you know, grow with this label um, and kind of see where we can take it and how, you know, how far we can take it with this particular, on this particular platform. Uh, and awesome. So, yeah, it was really, yes. it was just very natural. It was very natural how it all happened. Yeah, the, the key thing, uh, the key points there that you establish a connection on social media and you had almost uh, you had a ready album you know it's all clicked together you know uh, mm -hmm. i know i know this uh, label because um uh, one of the bands i did an album cover for them and they're oh, also cool. on that record table the scream of the butterfly band oh, i did a uh, yeah I, I did the cover for them so when i saw sing red I was like wow cool we have a connection you know that's cool yeah. And now let's talk about the, your new album that's coming out on Friday, July 9th, uh, as a solution. I discovered you on social media, and the first thing I saw was on Instagram, I saw the album cover, right? Yeah. Uh, and I was like, okay, awesome. That's <laughs> totally awesome. I will, check out, I will check out the music. I checked out the music. Freaking awesome. Even... And then, you know, like the rest is history, like they say, it's great. Can you, and then I read, out, read about it a little bit on your social, on Facebook. Can you please uh, tell us more about the, um, the direction? Because there's a history behind the cover, the whole characters that's on the photo, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 
a little bit expand on that. Ooh, where do we begin? Where do we start? Um, I think that it all originated because Melanie, our bass player, and Dre and I, we're the three original members of the band. Um, and we were doing a lot of magic together. We were all getting into shadow work. So we were doing a lot of exploring our shadow sides individually. And there is an alchemical expression, salutio, or it's actually salve et coagula, which is the idea that you take your shadow side and your conscious side, your ego, and you combine them so that instead of rejecting parts of your ego and parts of yourself that you think are bad or naughty or unacceptable, you just own that shit and you own your evil side and you own your dark side and you coagulate all of that together psychologically and then you become the whole person that you are. Because otherwise, if you don't incorporate your shadow, you're really just half of a person filled with judgment of the other half of yourself, right? Okay, so that being said, we were in conversation about this kind of thing in an ongoing way um, and when we started writing music together, all the three of us, we kind of had those ideas in the back of our minds. And so we decided that we wanted to call the album Salutio because Salutio has to do with the salve, disillusion, or uh, dissolvement. dissolvement, dissolving, mm -hmm. and, um, and coagulate, which is that coagulation, your shadow and conscious self. So yeah, Salutio has to do with that. And then um, when it came to the characters, we were working with Janice Gonzalez, who is another amazing musician from the Bay Area. She's a wonderful singer. She was in a band called Wild Eyes for years. Um, and she also is a brilliant artist and sculptor. And she wanted to work with us and do a photo shoot with us where we were all came up with our own characters. So she brought her ideas and we brought our ideas and um, just established basically archetypes. Every member of the band had an archetype that they were representing because we're shy about doing, using our personal image all the time, but it is necessary. But we thought maybe if we can bring a character for each of us, an archetype for each of us, then it's kind of like an illustration of something otherworldly and another way for us to be creative. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's all. Yeah, I and uh, it, we, you know, we got to work with Janice, yeah, uh, like I already mentioned, really amazing artist, makeup artist, um, and a, a really amazing photographer in the Bay Area as well, uh, Rob Williamson. And um, it was just like this really amazing experience. And, you know, the photos turned out really well. And it was like, well, we absolutely have to use this for the album. Like, this is just, you know, goes together um, so well. So as far as like the aesthetic, like, you know, artistic aspect of the, of the album, um, I think Ari did a really fantastic explanation of that just now. And yeah, I don't know if there's like another part of the question or not. Um, sorry if I missed that. No, 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 no. Like, that's what I wanted, you know, like the story behind, you know, how it was created, you know, the visuals, because it's, it's deep. It's, it comes from inside, you know, this is the, the inner stuff that's really important. It's, uh, it's a unique thing the, the, because when you see it, you already know that, all right, just a photo, you know, there's something deep there, you know, I want to check it out. And that's what's really cool about it. Um, uh, and you wrote for each character a huge biography, I think I saw on your social media. Are, are you bringing this to the stage also? Are you going to play with this, with the theatrical part? You know, it, it, I think it would be a, a, just where we're at in terms of like our, our band trajectory. It would be pretty difficult to be, you know, in, in costume. And I don't, I don't think we're necessarily a costume band or anything like Kiss or, or anything. That'd be kind of cool, but... It, this this is like a concept we're doing for this album and i think by the next you know by the our full length we're gonna have a, a, a 
even different sort of take on things and a different sort of thing that we want to express. Um, maybe some elements of of the of, of the costuming at, in future shows and stuff, um, but probably not all of the get ups. That says that would be quite a lot of prep work for us. <laughs> Uh, and actually, I wanted to ask about the album itself. You know, usually these days, uh, the whole trend is to release singles, 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 and then maybe collect it into EPs, you know? Right. And you decided to go with the album, you know, which is kind of, I don't know, like from the business side these days, is already, nah, like it, you should do singles, you know? What was the decision behind that? Well, we did release two, uh, Living On in California. So those are like two singles off of the record. Um, I mean, we could have probably broken it down to having every single song on the record being a single, but a couple of the songs on the album are more... Um, lengthy. Are pretty lengthy, which would they would, be pretty, they would be pretty long to be a single. And I know that rock and roll audiences have a slightly longer attention span, but like... Um, but even so, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's like a, a lot of the songs are meant to be, are meant to be listened to one after the other. And I know maybe that's a little bit dated in today's sort of like streaming single world. But I mean, I, I'm personally open to that in the future, uh, you know, doing something where we release just singles and then have it presented as a full package. That's definitely um, not off the table for me personally, but... Well, our idea with doing a six-song EP instead of a full length was that we were doing incremental releases instead of going from a four-song demo to like a 10 or 12-song full length. So we thought, we'll do an EP, um, we'll release a couple singles leading up to it to promote it, and in the meantime, we're working on what our next album is going to be is probably going to be a full length yeah um and also uh, there is a certain single aspect to this album in that we are doing a music video for every song on this ep so we've released uh -huh. two already. we've released two already and then when uh and soon after the, the ep is out on friday we're going to be doing another release of another video on it and then probably a month later a video after that so in that sense it's kind of like there's like a video single aspect to this album um and you know each video kind of has its own flavor um so and, and we you know we thought about doing that a long time ago but especially with pandemic we were like well we want to be able we don't know when we're gonna play shows so let's just do a bunch of videos and so we've been we've been filming those for like i don't even know how long at this point we've been working on videos Since for a year for a almost. year so, so so you have all those videos ready ready to go right yeah two, two, most, three, most of most them are done ready. yeah mm -hmm. So we're still so you already videos. so you kind of know already what you're going to do after the release on Friday. You know you have kind of yes, the plan. We got a plan. Yes, <laughs> that's, I mean, we, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, we've used a content calendar too. Which all these things I'm talking about, I learned from her, by the way. But <laughs> so if you want to learn more about you know that kind of stuff, definitely follow her on social media. <laughs> but um, and then, uh, give the, give the name of the Instagram if you want to follow oh, to follow on social media. Let me do a shout out of that. I appreciate that. Uh, Hesher Hustle. It's like it's like it's like DIY branding stuff from that perspective of a of a DIY artist who is you know everybody follow. So oh that's so sweet. Thanks guys. Uh, oh thank you specifically, Arthur. I appreciate that. Um, and by the way, I would love to chat with you more one on one about this because we have a lot of uh, tons Absolutely. of overlap with this stuff. Um, uh, but what I wanted oh, to say was yeah. that um, because if you want to be business oriented and business minded with your music and your art, creating more content is the best thing to do. So we knew that even though we couldn't get out and promote the new music live, we would have videos which people love. Everybody loves watching videos. <laughs> And Instagram's really become, according to Instagram, a video platform instead of a picture platform now. So things are very video oriented these days. So we thought, okay, let's make videos and then we'll have lots of content to ride out throughout the promotion of the record and after we release the record too. So we just have this, we're just like riding the wave of content. And so it's like a whole, it's like a whole plan. So yeah, it's 
definitely part of like a big overarching plan. And then by the time we're done writing out all of the content and videos and everything from the EP, we're already going to be ready to go into the studio and record the new album and come up with all new ideas for that too. Yeah. Which by the way, we will be releasing mm -hmm. singles off of that one first too, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And have you tried, what's your experience with TikTok? I have, you know what? I have been thinking about it for so long, and I'm just like, oh my god, I'm I'm still trying to get like just like figure like focus on doing reels for us, and then also um, uh, uh, YouTube Shorts too. Like it's just it's uh those are the things right now that I'm that I'm focusing on. I would love to get in TikTok world, but I would I would need more time in my day. I think eventually, um, I mean that's that's somewhere we're gonna need to be, um, but yeah. It's just all of these platforms. It's just I feel like just choosing so a many couple, platforms. just choosing a couple and going for it, and building your following there, and then jumping over. What I'm planning to do right now, for example, with uh, with the interviews that we're having right now, I'm gonna mm -hmm. chop it into clips and into pieces. Of course, I'm gonna That's tag cool. you everywhere, hey. and I'll upload it to YouTube, and then upload clips of you talking about the music industry to places like TikTok and uh, Instagram stories and stuff. We'll see how it goes, should go fine from what I know. But yeah, so you you are the content also. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, we are content. Yeah. And actually it's, 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 a way, it's a way how to make content if you don't have any, like have an interview, you know, talk to your band members, interview other band members. Chop it up, put it everywhere, you know? Yeah, it actually gets kind of fun to come up with ways to create content because I see bands like, like for example, Band Lucifer. They did a bunch yes. of Instagram posts. I love them. Yeah, I love them <laughs> they're too. So, they're, they just got it down. Um, Everything they do is just like perfect. Yeah. I, I really respect them. I really respect that band. Yeah, like they did a series of Instagram posts where each band member was talking about one of their favorite records. And it was like, I think they did videos too, corresponding videos where they would talk about what they liked about it and stuff like that and what how it came into influence their music and stuff. And I thought that was so cool. I was like, we should do that. So, yeah, there's just so many things you can do. It's like, there's, it's just, and it does take work and time. And I understand that a lot of musicians you know, and bands are like, we are trying to write an album. We don't want to have to do this. It's like, it's you, can, fun, you can do both. You can, we do it. You know, you just got to make sure the cameras are around, let them roll and, and figure out what you want to do with the stuff later. You know, it's, it's just, it's like, I think now as a band, you have to like resign yourself to the fact that you're actually a multimedia artist. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to be like, like doing stuff these days, you just kind of have to be like, all right, we're a band, but also, making videos Ex photos. exactly you, you need to you need to be doing everything well yeah. you have limitations of course but there are like several people in a band so uh you can figure it out and uh uh each platform requires its own content so you can't put videos into twitter it doesn't work like that but for example what we discussed today uh some Phrases can be quoted as tweets, and you can tweet them like that. Yeah. Or it can be chopped and go into TikTok, and it can go as a, because I'm going to split because we have Instagram, but I'm gonna put them horizontal and put them on YouTube because you can download the video. Yeah. So yeah, here it is. For sure. There's a lot uh, of by the way, I want I wanted to say that I really like the merch that you have, the T-shirt design. That's really cool. Yeah, we we we're, we're, we want to step up our game a little bit on with merch. Um, you know, we had stuff from the from you know the first release, and uh, that's definitely on my mind is like upping our merch. But we yeah, we have a new a new T-shirt design that we that our awesome bandmate Justin actually um, did for it's based off of our album cover. Um, and so we're really excited to like have that be available to everybody. Also, if you create a Shopify account and then, you know, you can create these designs. So you can take your logo, your artwork and put it like we put it on a pink uh, sweatshirt <laughs> and like people love them or like on a white sweatshirt. And I just keep vintage. We like to keep vintage designs in mind. And, um, but there's a lot of options that you can work with on there where you don't have to actually 
get um, screen printed stuff and like buy a bulk amount of it's it's a print on demand. Yeah, use mm -hmm. print on demand. And like we want to support our screen our screen printers, but when you're short on cash and you want to get more diversity with your designs, like a print on demand thing is is kind of cool and fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I've been telling uh, the uh, like up and coming uh, bands is that in the beginning uh, everybody wants to be uh, like super awesome musician, have their own merch and uh, get the tour and say all the cool stuff. Right, but right. in the beginning, uh, uh, ha it's highly likely really that uh, nobody can, nobody will buy the merch because nobody knows you. So. Right. Uh, don't spend if you have money better spend it on the music or something else uh, but uh, have the print on demand uh, service ready with your logo something basic or maybe a design and then when there will be enough people who will be asking for you to have like oh this really cool merge then you can print hundreds of t-shirts if you want then it becomes economically feasible for a long term yeah, I uh, think and that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a better way to do. I mean, I think it's a it's a good way to do it because also you can test out designs. Like you might have like three or four things that you've come up with, or and you're just not sure. And then you can see which ones sell the best, and then the ones that sell the best you can actually print out, and then sell those on tour. And it's just like you're more likely to sell them because they were more popular. Um, and so data, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you need you need to test everything. If you don't know, oh, I don't know which color is that or this, you know, just ask people. You, there's a, a communication. It's really important with the with the audience. Yeah, that's because uh, your audience feels like it's participating, and it's like it's fun for them because people love to share their opinions. Yeah, I mean <laughs> surveys, surveys on Instagram stories. People love those. I love those. So getting it, doing a little bit of market research is kind of fun, and you get interaction from people so yeah or for example we're talking about data for example i know a band uh what's the name well i don't know the name maybe i'll figure it out completely blank as usual uh <laughs> from switzerland right and one year ago i was checking on spotify their most um, popular places where the music is played you know mm -hmm. and they're from switzerland and their city well the the most um, listened city was Mexico, right? Somewhere in Mexico, right? And I was like, okay, cool. Maybe they should, based on the data, and there are a lot of cities in Mexico, maybe they should go on tour there. It was before, yeah. it was like a couple of years ago. And then literally one week later, I checked their Facebook account and they're on tour into like the, there, you know, somewhere in that oh, region. Nice. I was like, ah, they're probably also <laughs> like checking out the data, right? <laughs> that works, yeah. It's good to look at all that stuff because then it's like, oh, shoot, we have fans and this this is totally random, but we have fans here and then you go and it's, it makes sense. It totally makes sense. It's good to make decisions that way or at least have that be a big part of your consideration of like how you know, you tour, you know, all of that. Cool. I wanted to ask uh, quickly before we run out of time, just two things that people talk about always, you know, it's like Facebook ads. Oh my God. Can you like do some Facebook magic and then we're famous? Right. Have you, ha do you have experience with those? I have, run, I have done a little bit of Facebook advertising with, with this band, and I, I, I definitely want to do more in the future, but there's been some changes in, 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 the, uh, in, the, in the business platform, or whatever they call it now, the Facebook. So I have to like look into that and sort of relearn it. But I think that's it's a good thing to do if you already have a little bit of hype underneath your band first um because you, you you like people who are checking you out for the first time they want to see some social they want to see like social proof that like you're an actual band or music artist doing something and then i think you can have more a band it can have more effective ads when they have 
yeah, they have some like organic, I hate to sound so markety right now, but like when they have like some organic like heat underneath them from people actually like being producing music and supporting them. Um, but I'm for sure uh, exploring that option for the future. Um, just if nothing else, just for fun to experiment to see if like it really sort of impacts like our, our listenership and interest in our band and stuff like that. Exactly. I just... And you should, uh, well, you, you should sound marketing because it's important for people to get used to those terms because you're right, you're right. I don't want to hear again uh, <laughs> a phrase, somebody saying, I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't know. You, you do oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you, no, you should understand. Everybody should understand because they will just, I'm just afraid that bands will uh, find some, uh, weirdo guy and he says yeah okay i'll give you so many views or followers or whatever uh, and you're famous uh, just give me your money they do this and then nothing happens and he's like i uh, uh, not, not i don't know it's, totally. there's something is wrong with you not my problem that. yeah there's a lot of that scammer stuff out there too and i, I agree too it's like especially you know younger newer bands who are like we just want people to hear us okay this sounds cool we'll just like give this person a thousand dollars and then it's like you're getting kicked off of Spotify or whatever because you only have bots listening to your music, you know, and just like stuff like that. So I agree. I think it's, it is important for musicians to, to educate ourselves about this industry so that we can make really good, smart, uh, informed decisions about like who, you know, how, where we put our energy into and, and, you know, if we want to hire somebody, like all of that, like, it's just so important. So I agree. It's that, you know, I, I, I believe for being marketing ever again. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> <No. Like> that. <laughs> uh, I, I believe that people, even though the, they, they need to slowly educate themselves, even though that you don't uh, need it right now, but you, at least you need to get a hang of it when the time comes, because there is a certain point when you need all this, but later mm -hmm. in the development of the band. You know, for example, like the new hot topic is NFTs, right? Oh God, Everybody's yeah. talking about NFTs, NFTs, technology and all this stuff. All right, cool. But what's important is that you need to understand a little bit of it so that when the time comes and you need to sign a contract to the label, and more, maybe there inside there will be like some kind of NFT because they already know it. You know, maybe you don't understand it, which, which happened before with streamings and everything, you know, it's what the same story. Uh, but you need to understand a little bit about it. So, do, but don't get too much into it. Just keep an eye on everything. I usually, for, for uh, upcoming events, I just say that you just need to send messages, not messages, but contact each person, your family member, friends, and you know, everybody you know, when, if you want to get followers or whatever, do it hand to hand, person in person. Establish a connection, a relationship. It's like audience. It's like uh, stage. Yeah, uh, I agree. That's way, way more authentic than you know trying to pay for stuff. <laughs> like at least at first, don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, save your money in the beginning, and then just you know grind, and and then you get to the point where you can spend money without thinking too much about. It. Uh, uh, yes, I think we're almost out of time. Uh, where can people reach you? Like, what's where should they follow the band Psychic Hits? We are the most active on Instagram, so right here. If you are watching this and you are not following us uh, and you are intrigued, <laughs> follow us here. Uh, we also are, have a YouTube channel too that we're sort of building on slowly. So if you're in the YouTube world, feel free to follow us there. We're also on Facebook and Twitter, um, although a little bit less active there. So if you really want to like get to know us, follow us here. We post pretty frequently. And uh, we would love to get to know you too. Anyway, you can always drop us a DM. We are a really friendly band, and I'm not just saying that. Like, we are so open to like building awesome, you know, connections with our fans and followers and stuff. So we're very approachable. Uh, and yeah, just hit us up whenever. And thank you again uh, for letting us chat with you today. Uh, thank you very much for coming. And I would need to mention that. Uh, uh, that the name of uh, of the psychic hate on Instagram is 
psychic hit, psychic underscore hit, right? Underscore hit. That's correct. Yeah. It's for people who, who it's for people who are listening, you know, so that they uh, know. So you always need to spell it out. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. And, and the album is coming out on Friday. Yes, this and Friday. And everybody should pretty safe and follow. Great. Yes, please do. And you can have a chance to win a t-shirt if you do. Just go to our link in our bio right now. Yeah, tell us, tell us That's now, famous. now, tell us now what, they, what, what, what do people need to do? You want to go take this one? Sure. So you just go to the link in our bio and follow us on Spotify. If you don't have Spotify, you can still get into um, the contest. And then we will pick a winner the day after the release on July 10th. Yes, that is all. Ex that is all. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much for coming. Hopefully see you in Europe when you're going to be touring. Yes. Love that. Super busy. Right. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Have, Have a nice a day. Lovely evening. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.